Um, tell me how you're, how you ended up here in Cobb County. Um, well, actually, I am now divorced, but I used to be married, and at the time, um, my husband got a job at Kennesaw State. Okay. University, so that's what brought us to Cobb County. Have you always lived here? No, I moved here in 2009. Okay, so where did years. you live before? Um, I lived, I was North Carolina, New York, Maryland, Virginia, Maryland, Germany, Maryland. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so just everywhere. Yeah. So how long have you been here? Nine years. Okay. Uh, up and down the East Coast and one stint in... Uh, Germany. That's pretty similar to how I got here too. Actually, my family moved from the. My parents are actually originally from Canada, and they moved to Connecticut. And I was born in Connecticut, and then my sister was born in North Carolina. Then we moved to South Carolina, and then we got to Georgia, kept and going, then stayed. Kept going further, just south. like one state at a time. <laughs> Painstaking, and we live up there on Tempest Way, just like. These houses are pretty standard, huh? Like, all the houses look pretty so. much almost the same. Yeah, I think they Especially have... in, like, the sub... Or the cul-de-sacs. I think in this section of the um, neighborhood, there were, like, three or four builders. So, there's, like, three or four house styles. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, the same builder built the same it's house, like, just hmm, in different these lots. These look similar. Yeah. But can you tell me a little bit about uh, your home, like, description-wise? Like, is what kind of home it is? Is it, like, two stories with a basement or... Okay, Just yeah. describe it for um, me. It was built in 2000, okay. and it's um, two stories exactly, like you said, with a basement. Um, we do have a... Um, it's a full basement, and it's completed. A lot of the houses around here, it's still an unfinished basement. I guess it's roughly... If you include, the, you know, it's 3,600 above ground and then 1,200 feet, you know, square feet below ground. So it's like 4,800 square feet. Too big. Stupid big, if you ask me. Um, it's got a hardy plank, like the concrete siding, you know, and brick. Gotcha. Do you like living here? It's got some pros and cons to it. Do you want to tell me a little bit about the, the, the pros and cons? <laughs> well, I already mentioned stupid big. Um, I just, I find these big houses sort of ridiculous, especially for, it's me and two kids living here. And um, the kids wanted to stay here for the school districts after the divorce, and I would much rather be in a smaller home, something that's easier to take care of. Um, and I also don't like having to drive absolutely everywhere, you know, just basically to get anywhere from here, you have to drive. That's true. Yeah. And I love to walk and there's places that I like to walk and that, you know, and there's no sidewalks, so it's a little dangerous around, you know, so, um, those are the main things. I mean, the house is fine. It's just too big. What about some pros? Those are oh, <laughs> oh, 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 pros. My kids are happy here. <laughs> they like their school district. Gotcha. Um, you know, and I, like I said, I mean, the house is nice. It's well built. I, you know, it provides excellent shelter. Um, and I like my neighbors. Okay. So, yeah, there's, there's pros. How old are your kids? I have a 14-year-old and an 11-year-old. Oh, okay, cool. So they're, like, kind of young. Yeah. I, I don't know why I said that. I was just like, yeah, my, my siblings are old. <laughs> <laughs> older than you? Like, I older one, than college age? Yeah, or? my brother's out of college, and my sister's about to graduate high school, so I was like, we're so old. <laughs> yeah, you're, uh, you're further along than we are. Yeah, I was like, man, youth. <laughs> Um, okay, so now that we've established, you're a homeowner, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. And do you know, like, approximately when you moved in? September of 2009. Okay. Do you have rooftop solar for your house? No. Would you like to tell me why? <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, I have not looked into it, um, partly because of my... Uh, I mean, I guess this is a personal interview, so keep going back to personal stuff. But because of the divorce and because um, I'm trying to make ends meet and keep up the house, it needs a lot of different things um, done to it that I that's like a, an extra step I would do if I had extra money laying around and could toy with the idea of a return on investment. Gotcha. Whereas there's things that have to be done because like the window sills are rotting or the air conditioning is a, has gone out in one level and is about to go out on the next level. You know, that that's 
$5,000 that I have to invest when right. that happens. So I have a limited budget to do home maintenance with. So, and it's, it's being eaten up by stuff that has to be done. It's like mandatory, you know, mm-hmm. that it has to be done. Whereas solar seems to me still an option that you would want to invest in. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I don't know if I plan to stay here long term. You have already said it's not my... That's a good point. You know, so why would I invest in something that you're going to see the return from long term when I already know in advance that I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be here you know, that much longer. Mm-hmm. So when my kids are done with school, I'm you know, moving someplace else. Gotcha. So did you feel like, have you actually considered in the past, like getting solar panels for a house? Did Was it a conscious decision that you made for this house or like any previous houses that you've had? Um, I've never had solar um, and I've never lived anywhere that qualifies as that long term. I want to, I know I'm going to stay there and, you know, sort of, planning for that return to clarify that that did you actually like have you thought about solar I have thought about okay. it I've never gone so far as to investigate it right. beyond what I know from general knowledge gotcha you know I've never like priced it out and yeah how much would this save me and how long would it take me to get my money back right you know I've never gone that far but you didn't need to because you already knew that you were going to stay places long term right gotcha okay um and and I don't know if this comes into a play in another question and you can tell me to, to hold no it. No, no, go ahead. It's um, all up to you. My family actually had solar panels on our home when I was growing up. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Yeah. So we're talking about um, Jimmy Carter days. You okay, know, cool. Pre-Reagan. I think there were some tax incentives. Like, you know, just like now there's tax incentives if you get an electric vehicle. There used to be tax incentives if you did solar. Mm-hmm. And um, so people did back in the early 80s. Where did you live then? In Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, okay, cool. I actually know a lot of people around there. <laughs> yeah, well, you said you yeah. lived in North Carolina for a bit. That's interesting. Um, yeah. Can you speak to uh, your childhood a little more then, since you said you grew up with them, with solar panels? Um, yeah, we had them. I think they were primarily for water heating. I don't think they ne- necessarily fed into our electrical system. Okay. Um, I think we just had a um, solar hot water heater. Um, So solar panels on the roof. I did think they were kind of weird when I was a kid. You know, I was like, what are those things? And why are my parents doing this? This is like bizarre. Um, I think I was in, what, third grade. I was like, you know, eight, nine, ten, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Um, But later on, I thought it was kind of cool. And we never had an issue of any sort. Like they never had to be... I don't remember hmm. any problems, like, the, you know, parents complaining about them or mm-hmm. anything. So, so would you say um, your family had, what kind of relationship did your family have with the environment? They were not necessarily environmentally conscious people. You know, um, in fact, less, I would say average, you know, um, they were not overly concerned, although... Um, we were very much like all of our vacations and stuff were camping and being out in nature. So appreciative okay. of nature, but not necessarily environmentalists. Gotcha. And you, Do you said, know what I mean? Yeah. Can you speak to uh, your college experience a little? Because you did say you had uh, environmental science was your bachelor. Yeah, I actually did um, chemical engineering as my ba- is my bachelor's degree, oh. um, and I went out into the working world. Um, and I worked at a plant that made pesticides. That okay. was my first job out of college. So I would make pesticides by day, and then I would go to the organic grocery store <laughs> at night because I didn't want to eat what I was making. Yeah. So that sort of um, crisis of conscious um, led me down more of an environmentally aware path, and um, I actually did a master's in environmental science. And then I... Um, I did work as an environmental consultant, and um, I worked for um, the government doing, like, government policy analysis for environmental policy. Do you still do environmental-related work today? Um, Somewhat, but um, it's uh, through a consulting firm that does food and beverage engineering work. And so, like, we're doing a wastewater treatment plant for a um, beverage plant, for example. Do you feel like your experiences with solar panels as a child and also your relationship with the environment that you've learned about 
and that you've experienced in your work and stuff? Has that affected your day-to-day life or how you view things? Definitely. Definitely. Can you explain a little bit? Um, well, I mean, I would love to live in a little, maybe not a miniature house, but a little self-sufficient solar powered, you know, composting toilet, (laughs) you know, I would love to live in a house like that. That was just, um, the way I think we all need to probably live in the future in order to have a world left to live in. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like some of the decisions that you would make day to day are influenced by, uh, like an environmental conscious of some sort? Yeah, I really do. Um, I mean, I drive a Prius. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I try to make conscious choices that will um, sort of work towards the greater good. You know, whether it's buying organic food or recycling or planting my own food. You know, trying to minimize energy usage in the home. But again, stupid big house, it's hard to do. Do you do all those things? Like, do you have a garden? I have a little one. A little teeny tiny. That's cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a small one, too. It's... Okay, it, we just started it. It's not working that well, but we try. Right now it's more uh, weeds and one basil plant is basically what my garden is. It's hard. The Georgia soil isn't great either. I think it's a lot of clay or like red clays mostly. Yeah, I have the raised bed. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's just all soil from Gotcha. Me. Was the decision to not have solar panels on your roof like one that was made by you like a conscious decision that you made it was a conscious decision to not even look into it yeah okay I would put it that way gotcha but you did consider it and then said I'm not looking into this yeah gotcha I mean it's one of those like back to your previous question just a minute ago you know are there things that inform my daily life and my decision making yes all the time I'm kind of running through my head what could I be doing differently or better or you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, to sort of do my part. And um, so it's definitely something I think about. I'm like, God, wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> you know, but not, I've not really considered it beyond that. So if you had the option, would you put rooftop solar on your home? Yes. Can you tell me a bit of why or why not you would? Why I would, and, and saying if I had the opportunity means that it would be financially wise to do so. But yes, I would. Um because I, you know, the, the sun is a constant source of energy. We live in a wicked hot place where there's plenty of sun, um, you know, what, 200 and some odd days out of the year. Yeah, it was very hot. <laughs> and, um, you know, um, on this particular house, it's south facing. I mean, I get sun constantly all day. I know mm-hmm. it would be great. Um and I would love to, I'm not so much into necessarily living off the grid from a self-sustaining, you know, standpoint, but more just trying to find alternatives to fossil fuels, trying to find, you know, a better way to live. So yeah, I would definitely be interested in doing it. Um, and the, the downside are, you know, what are the costs? What am I going to, you know, is it really going to save me money? Mm-hmm. Do you think there would be any non-economic barriers for you personally to not adopt solar power? I don't care what it looks like or, you know, as long as it's not gargantuan ugly, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, the people around you, like your neighbors and stuff, would they care about... What you're you know, the, actually, like. as you asked me that question, it occurred to me, we do have a homeowners association and do they have a policy of like, it can't, you know, some, something can't be visible, mm-hmm. you know, and I don't even know what solar panels look like these days on houses. Are they, you know, the same as they were the last time I saw them? I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't, I don't know that I would care what my neighbors think, but I do know that we have a homeowners association and anything that they, you know, they do regulate what's visible from the street. You know, so if you change your paint, you have to get their approval. If you cut down a tree in the front of the house, you have to get their approval. Gotcha. Do um, do you think that the neighbors think similarly to you or differently in terms of uh, why they would or would not adopt solar? Um, I know that my neighbor to this side for sure... Um, would be very similar in my thinking and they would be right there behind me you know Um, other neighbors are probably a lot less open to the concept and I don't I mean I've never discussed it with them other than uh, my immediate next door neighbors okay Uh, in general what do you think some of like the pros and cons of adopting solar would be 
For like anyone. For me, per- or, for, or for anyone in Cobb. Anyone. For you personally, if you can reduce your um, you know, sort of ecological footprint, you're helping out the world. If you're, um, you know, if you can save money on your electricity bill, I can't see anybody arguing with that. <laughs> you know, we're all economically motivated in the end. You know, for Cobb County itself, the the value of going more solar, I mean, I'm certainly would make our power grid uh, more reliable and sustainable to take some drain off of it you know and and even I've heard talk of if you make enough solar power with your house you can somehow I don't know how it works send it back to Georgia Power and like get credit for it you know I mean fantastic yeah you know because there are power outages there's power shortages there's you know and we're burning of course you know also the more fossil fuels you burn the more pollution there is in the air, so we could be reducing our air pollution, you know, possibly. So uh, there are a lot of advantages. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure I see any disadvantages. Okay. Do you think um, people in Cobb think of non-economic barriers to solar power that would influence their decision on adopting solar? Yeah, I do think that there's people who find um, solar panels um, are not very attractive, at least, you know, what you typically think of or like a huge field of them or something. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, I don't know that they've had that much exposure to what they look like on a house. I mean, on a house, they look like a skylight or something. You know, they don't have to be horrendous looking. Mm -hmm. So I think some of the fears may come out of just lack of knowing what they could look like or that they could be on the back side of the house where nobody has to That's see true. them. That's true, yeah. I think know. people just don't consider it, it seems, like they don't think about solar right. in general. You know, and another idea I heard recently, which I thought was fabulous, was putting, you know, we've got all these ugly highways. They're ugly anyway. You know, why not that median strip of the highway, why not make it just solar panels, <laughs> you know? That's an idea. Yeah. Miles and miles and miles and miles and miles of energy. Yeah, it's energy. just empty. Why not? Yeah. yeah. That's an idea. Yeah. Um, we're going to start out, I'm going to give you the U.S. map first with the pen. This is the United States? No, yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on there, we'll just, um, I'm just going to ask you to mark, uh, where do you think people have the most rooftop solar energy on their homes? Okay. And draw it on the map, and you can use any words you want to label anything you want. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say, and I don't know why, maybe because the like latest magazine that I read about that had solar energy was like in the sort of New Mexico, Arizona area. Can it, can it be that big? Like yeah, yeah. My you area? Can, you okay. can make your areas as mu- big as you want. <laughs> Um, you know, people in California are pretty, um, shall we say, uh, forward thinking. Give California a circle. Mm. You could write forward thinking <laughs> next to California. <laughs> you like that? I like, you? I like to make people label their, 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 their maps. Yeah. Okay. I'll put latest article I read was about article I read. Was about the Southwest. You know, and the other thing, I don't know how to put this on here. I was going to, for the people who are, like, all into, like, being self-sufficient and nobody interfering in their life, mm-hmm. I'm going to put, like, little spots. Uh, <laughs> yeah, some of works. the more, like, self-sufficient states. <laughs> self-sufficient survivalists. <laughs> survivalists. How's that for a stereotype? Interesting. There we go. Um, and I'll put a couple of those dots in Georgia, too. And you notice I'm putting them more in the, like, random spots. Mm. Okay, there we go. I know that's that's my vote on the country. Are you finished with uh-huh. the map, then? Okay. Yeah. Would you like to explain a little bit about why you labeled the areas you did? Um, well, really, like I said, I mean, it's these are really wild um, guesses, <laughs> you know, because I don't know. Um, but I did read an article the last time... I think it was like a Mother Jones article. Are you familiar with that magazine? I'm not. Mother- I don't read magazines okay. very much, so I probably... Um, you might look it up online, yeah. Mother Jones. Um, it's sort of a back-to-nature environmentalist magazine. 
you know. Okay, so anyway, at least it used to be. Um, the last time I remember reading about solar panels, it was all in the Southwest and how it was very popular there. So just the New Mexico, Arizona area? Yeah. And then, um, like I said, in California, just because they're so, I mean, they get plenty of sunshine and they tend to be more liberal thinking. Um, so, and they, they pass the most stringent environmental laws in the country. You know, even for like businesses. I mean, there's so many, like, flat rooftop businesses that could have solar power. Um, so, I don't, I mean, I don't know what to say other about the self-sufficient survivalists other than I'm being stereotypical there. So, um, are you including in that um, all of the Midwest, basically? No, it's more those western states. The ones you, surrounding California? Yeah, and more, I'm actually thinking more... Um, you know, people who live literally off the grid uh, or try to. What do you mean by off the grid? People literally trying to live off the land and not dependent on a municipal source of water or power. Do you think they would have it on their rooftops? Probably. Okay. I don't know where else they would put it necessarily. Did you put the dots in Georgia for some reason? <laughs> um, I do think that there's some self-sufficient survivalist type folks in Georgia too. Um, I will tell you, I mean, maybe this is unkind, that I don't see Georgia as very, a lot of the Georgians I know, having lived up and down the East Coast in several mm -hmm. different places, as being very liberal forward thinking people who are concerned about the environment. Gotcha. So you have said liberal more than once now. So are you thinking <laughs> that is fine? That's perfectly fine. I just want to expand it's on your bias. opinions. Yes. So are you thinking politics uh, comes into play? Yes. A lot. Yes. Would you like to expand on that thought a little bit? Oh, can I do so intelligently? Um, I don't know if I can do so intelligently, but I do think it comes into a play that a lot of times um, because some of the people who are pushing the ideas of, of solar tend to be environmentalists, tend to be sort of, you know, looked at at least by a traditional conservative person as being liberal left-wingers, um, that it gets poo-pooed as an idea when it's really, it's a scientific idea. It's not a political idea. But I think it just gets ignored as a, um, as a scientific useful idea because it gets associated with sort of a branch of politics. Gotcha. Um, so what do you think makes the communities you labeled so different from um, the people in the community that we live in? in um, well, it is a fact that California has the most stringent environmental regulations in the country. Um, it's a fact that when it comes to environmental developments that California um, tends to lead the country. So if there were going to be a place where um, the political and both cultural aspects of the state led itself towards solar, I would put my money on California. Whether that's true or not, I have no idea. That's just sort of me thinking, sitting here that's good. in my dining room. That's good. That is what means. <laughs> um, do you think uh, the people in the different places that you labeled have different mindsets that would contribute to them wanting solar or not wanting solar? You know, as I, the mindsets being, you know, and, it, and it's very different, right? The self-sufficient mindset is completely different from the, we want to do what's best for the environment concept, mm -hmm. right? But I think those two are the two mindsets that I would put as being more in favor of solar. And how is that different from um, the mindset where we live? I, as I said, that's why there's a few circles in Georgia. I think there are a lot. There are several groups of people that fill more into the self-sufficient. Let's not have government involved in our life, including providing us with power. Um, and there are some, you know, obviously more liberal thinking pockets in Georgia. But in general, most people I know are extremely conservative. Um, and are anti, I hate to say this, but tend to be more anti-environmentalist because that's associated 
with the less conservative political viewpoints. Gotcha. To the point that in our neighborhood, for example, wanting to even have a, there's like, let's just say there's 150 houses, and we want to have one trash company come in once a week, so we only have one set of trucks coming through the neighborhood, which both cuts down on fuel usage, cuts down on pollution, cuts down on traffic, cut, you know, improves safety because trash trucks aren't safe. You should have seen the fireworks on our um, neighborhood group of discu- near discussion group. I'm going to have my own trash company. Nobody can tell me who I can use for trash. I refuse to have government mandated trash. I mean, it was mm. insane insane um so not willing to consider the logical explanation for why this would be a useful option so it's really it falls far more into that anti-environmentalist type thinking than at least what i associate with my experiences in california for example okay Um, does that answer your question it does um do you think other factors come into play for those areas other than what you've labeled? Um, not that I know of. I don't know, like I said, if there's any sort of incentives in any states to do solar. I know that my parents, who I would not have classified as environmentalists at all, took advantage of a solar power tax incentive back in the you know, early 80s. So that, that can be a useful tool, but I don't know if it exists anywhere. Do you think weather comes into play at any point for uh, whether or not people adopt? Yeah, I do think. I mean, that's. I've lived in upstate New York where it's like gray, literally gray, 300 days out of the year. There's something falling out of the sky. Now, does that preclude solar? I don't know. But I think there, um, you know, there are some weather considerations where it would be less likely for people to think about solar. Gotcha. So you're saying since New York doesn't get a lot of sun that they wouldn't want solar? Yeah. Well, gotcha. not only just not do they get a lot of sun, but they get a lot of <laughs> rain and snow. Okay. And, you know, it's not just that it's an overcast day. Mm-hmm. There's a, you know, so I, I don't know. I don't know if that's an impact or not. I don't know enough about solar power. Gotcha. Um, compared to some of the other places that you've lived, did you feel like there was more solar in some places than others? Uh, that may be another reason why I'm, um, circling some of these places out West is having traveled out West and, and driven a lot through like Utah, Idaho, um, and Nevada. I've seen, and actually, um, Arizona, New Mexico, I've seen solar panels on houses out there. I might have seen a handful of them around here. Do you have anything else you want to say about the U.S. map? Um, I mean, do you want me to capture what I said about I think the weather might be a limiting factor? You could. Okay. You don't have to, like, write full sentences, but you can write whatever you feel like. I mean, I, I truly don't know about the technology whether it would be a limiting factor or not. We're going to move on to the map of Georgia. I have no clue. Yeah. I don't know why it's really interesting so far. Like, people get the map of Georgia. It's like, this is the state we live in, but nobody knows. <laughs> like, they don't know. And uh, I guess, like, we don't live in all of those different parts. Like, we haven't been there, so we don't know what's around. Yeah, I mean, I can't even tell you where I've seen solar power. Um, just based on your your best guess and your opinion of the area of Georgia um where do you think people have the most uh rooftop solar energy on their homes take your time yeah I I mean it whatever I say is a random guess I'm gonna hope that maybe there's this is gonna be a hope map a map of hope (laughs) I'm gonna say maybe somewhere along the coast um maybe some like really forward thinking people and in the city of Atlanta or maybe even Athens. Um, you know, maybe we could hope that there's some up here and then, you know, I'm going to do my little survivalist people up here. So you think the survivalists would be in the far in north? In the mountains. <laughs> That's where they would be. Yeah, those people. 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know. They could be anywhere. They could they be. They could be anywhere. We'll give a couple polka dots <laughs> down here. I don't know. Just by your best, your best guess and your perception of uh, the state of Georgia, what makes people from the different communities you circled so different from each other and from the place that we live? I don't know that I could say that there's a difference. I mean, I really, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to say that there's a difference. This is really a random guess. Okay. So you think, like, the, are there different mindsets in different parts of Georgia? Or are you trying to say, like, the whole of Georgia pretty uniformly thinks almost the same? About solar power? About solar power. Um, well, just, I don't want to go back into my political... You can, you can do it however you want. <laughs> I know, but, um, I mean, it is, again, a fact that... Um, statistically, there are more Democratic, left-leaning people in the city of Atlanta than there are, like, in Valdosta. So if we stick with that theory or that truth, um, then I think statistically there will be more environmentally leaning people around the city of Atlanta than, say, in Valdosta. Okay. And that I think environmentally leaning people are going to be more open to the idea of solar energy. So, um, could you tell me more about why you think people in, that's basically Cobb County right there, like the, the large area, yeah. <laughs> um, people where we live, I guess, um, and everywhere you circled, including, um, why they would have the most solar on their rooftops besides how you said the, the political reasons. Yes. I mean, I said somewhere along the coast just because Maybe the people think more about the sun <laughs> on the coast. I don't know. Um, so really, it's it's more the the um, probably more than anything the I'm thinking it's the worldview that they're coming from. That they're coming from more of an environmentally focused worldview, and then that that's why those those areas might be more likely. So are you saying those areas that you circled are perhaps more liberal than the other areas? Yeah, but again, well, I know Atlanta is, but... Um, Does that make the other areas conservative? Have you looked at a map of the politics in, the, in Georgia? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much so. Okay. Um, can you tell me about um, some of the people that you know personally here in Georgia? Do they have? Do you know anyone who has solar on their roofs? I'm trying to think. I don't think so. I I know one couple who, um, you know, they're closer to retirement age, and they wanted to buy a you know a small farm. I'm I'm um, into horses, so okay. And they wanted to buy a small horse farm, and they wanted to put solar on their roof. They wanted to be, you know, very, and I don't know anything about their politics, um, but they wanted to be very self-sufficient and try to, you know, collect rainwater and do solar power. Gotcha. So the only people I've actually ever heard, other than my neighbors next door, talk about things like that. Gotcha. Since I've lived here. Um, Why do you think... Uh, the friends who do have them and then anyone you know who doesn't have them, why do you think that they have decided to opt for it or to not opt for it? So again, I don't know anybody that has the solar power um, panels. And, and that one couple that was talking about getting them, I mean, it was just sort of their dream to have a farm that had, I don't know if their interest was being... Um, self-sufficient or if their interest was being you know as environmentally conscious as possible I don't know what their motivation was I know my next door neighbors um it's much more of an sort of environmentalist type focus gotcha so the reasons you think that uh your friend who has them with their farm well they were just be... talked about getting oh, them. okay so they don't have they them. don't actually have them. gotcha gotcha yeah. but they they have expressed desire in getting them. right I gotcha. mean they're one of the those are like the two sets of friends that I have next door neighbors and this other couple that have ever even talked about it. Do you know people who are against it or like have expressed that they're against it with Uh, strong opinions? No. Um, not, especially if we're talking about specifically rooftop solar. No, I've heard, and I can't place a finger right now on who, but I have heard people complain. Apparently, there's some place you can drive by and you'll see like a field of solar panels that have been put out. 
Here, it's like maybe an old military base or something. Okay. They've converted over to solar panels. You know, just fields and fields of solar panels. And just complaining about how ugly it is. But, other, I mean, it's just not something that comes up in conversation very often. Maybe I'll bring it up after this conversation <laughs> <laughs> to learn more what people's opinions are. But, um, you know, you would think it would be more common or more you know but it's not like I said to my knowledge it's not a topic of conversation that I can remember other than those two folks talking about it okay do you think just based on your knowledge of your neighbors and your close friends uh how is their general mindset like in relation to solar power positive since they're thinking you know since they would be in favor of doing it um yeah, I mean, that's... I don't really know beyond that. So you think your friends and neighbors and, like, people that you know that you are friends with, like, they would be in favor of getting yeah, them? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. You know, since I'm allowed to voice opinions, yes. my only other opinion is, or thought, is why isn't it more common? Why aren't people like Georgia Power... And maybe they are, and I'm just ignorant of it, coming into communities and talking about the value of it to the entire... I mean, because it, it, it's a asset for them if people have solar power. Why isn't it more of a public conversation? Mm-hmm. You know? And there's tons and tons of people coming around trying to replace my windows and my roof, and why don't people solicit solar power? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm serious. That's a thought. No, you're right. You know? That's interesting. I mean, we're not supposed to have solicitors in our neighborhood, but they do it anyway. Yeah. House Might cleaning, as well. power washing. Just Why not solar power? Where are those people? Yeah, that's true. 